recording on this computer and going to the screen. So here were the three 1.3 questions I got for, sorry, it's pretty dark, for Ask My Instructor. Yeah, you guys, if you're ever having tech issues, you can um, just stop. <laughs> like if it's persistent and you're not getting the information, you can stop, you can watch it later. Good? All right. Oh, for in-person for the screen. Yeah, you got, uh, I'm recording it, so um, you can watch it later. I'm sorry, I totally don't know what's going on on campus. It's very distressing for both me and you, I'm sure. Uh, but we are recording now, so this will all be recorded and uploaded to our Blackboard if you are worried, and I apologize for those technical issues. So the first question was 7 over 6 minus 1 over 3. Yeah, you can go to the library. Um, minus negative 1 over 3. So when you are subtracting or adding two fractions, you need the same denominator, okay? So to get the same denominator, what can we do to six and three? We need six and three to be the same exact number. So we, what we have seen before is like we multiply six by the three, we multiply the three by the six, right? That's one way to do it. That gives you a big number. However, you can also just say, hmm, six is two times three. So I'm just gonna take three and multiply it by two. Does that make sense? Anything I do to the bottom of my fraction, I have to do to the top of the fraction. So seven over six minus negative one over three, I'm only gonna change that second fraction, rewrite it, seven over six is now minus negative one third, the one times the two is a negative two, the three times the two is a negative, or is a six, right? And we're just, that negative needs to stay there. The parentheses is just because we're subtracting this. So you can include the parentheses or not, it does not matter. So I multiplied the one by the two, I got two. I got multiplied the three by the two, I got six. Now I have common denominators. So now I have seven, six. Remember that minus a negative is the same as a positive, right? So if I had nine, sorry, that's just a bunch of the same. Nine minus negative six, that's the same as nine plus six, right? Okay, so that's seven, six plus two, six. We have the same denominator. That denominator remains. Seven and two is nine, so nine, six. You can simplify that. You can divide them both by three, right? Nine divided by three is three. Six divided by three is two. So if you put that into lowest terms, it's actually three over two. We divided nine by three and we got three. We go divided six by three and we got two. Is that okay? So for um, fractions, if you're adding or subtracting them only, you need a common denominator. You can multiply six times three and three times six, or you can just think what's an even smaller number I can use, okay? The next ask my instructor question I got was negative five halves plus three to the third power. It's okay if you don't have one of these calculators. Negative five squared plus three to the third. Do you think that's gonna be a big number or a small number? It's just the number two. So there is a difference between negative five squared and negative, oops, sorry, I don't even need that. Well, we'll do it three different ways. Do you see those differences? Okay, so negative five squared is negative 25. Negative five squared is negative 25, but, and that is because that two only pertains to what is closest to it. The negative is its own separate thing. Those are actually two different parts, right? So if, you want to raise negative five to two, 
and make it positive, it needs to have parentheses. Without parentheses, that is just negative. And the two only relates to the five, okay? So in this case, negative five squared, five squared is 25, so that's a negative 25. Is that okay? So negative five squared, if I had had parentheses, then it would be a positive. But because there's no parentheses, it's a negative. It's you take the five, you square it, and then you apply the negative. Why? Because we have PEMDAS, right? Exponents are above multiplication, division, addition, or subtraction. So that's actually a subtraction sign, right? So you're going to do the exponent in the order of operations before you're going to apply the negative. We solve the exponent and then we apply the negative, okay? Three times three times three is gonna be 27. So now you're essentially taking 27 and you're subtracting 25 and you just get two, okay? So that I think that the real thing to remember is that negative, okay? Without the parentheses, that negative is after you square it. It's applied after you square it. Okay, last one was the square root of x e, divided by y minus y over x, except that they gave us that x is 25 and y is negative six. So let's substitute those in. Remember, I put them all in parentheses. And then, so the square root of 25 over negative six minus, negative six, hopefully I'm doing this right. I often copy things wrong, over 25, okay? Oh, I remember the negatives and everything. All right, so square root of 25 is five because five times five is 25. So I can change that to five over negative six minus negative six over 25. Again, it doesn't matter if that's there, that minus sign is right there, right there, or out in front, okay? So you could change that to negative 5, 6 minus negative 6 25ths. And I just added the uh, parentheses. You don't have to, to denote that those are two minus signs, okay? Two negatives make a positive, right? So we have negative 5, 6 plus 6. 25ths, okay? And you didn't have to do all of that first. First you can get, um, like here we need the same denominator. So you can get the same denominator first before you do all of the changing of those signs. Does not matter the order in that case, okay? So again, just like here we had seven six minus negative one third, and here we did, we got them to be like terms first, and then we changed that to a positive. The next step is to make these the same, okay? So if I can't think of anything that um, 25 and six both go into, the fastest way, even though it's gonna be a very big number, is just to multiply it by the other one. So it's gonna be six times 25 and 25 times six. Again, anything I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So I'm going to take 25 times 5 over 25 times 6. So we have 125. Oh, sorry, negative. Always forgetting. Negative 125. And then 6 times 25 is 150. Plus 6 times 6 is all the same as 6 squared, which is 36. And then 25 times 6, we did the um, already is 150. All right. So we have negative 125 over 150 plus 36 over 150. What this does not mean is that this is a negative and this is a positive and it's zero. Okay. Because remember, if these are both, sorry, if these are both sixes, the answer has a six. Okay. So we're not doing anything to the bottom the bottom stays the same. That's why we got it to a, we, that's why we found a common denominator because we 
um, are basically just saying that we need each of those in 150 pieces. This is negative 125 pieces out of 150, and this is positive 36 pieces out of 150. Good. Like here, let me give you a picture, okay? I know fractions don't matter a whole lot. But here we have uh, six. I'm very bad at this. Mm -hmm. There's three, right? All right. There's six pieces. And actually there's seven out of six. So we need two different of these. So each of those is one sixth, right? And then over here we have one third. What we did to the one third by multiplying it by two was we made it now into, instead of three pieces, now we have six pieces, right? So that was seven sixths over here. Seven sixths. And then this was one third, right? One third out of the three. But when we change that to six, it's actually two of the six, right? So the, that's why the six doesn't change because we're just counting up the pieces. So we have seven, but we're taking away two, right? So that's this minus this leaves us with, oh, sorry, it was minus a negative. So we're adding those. Seven plus two is nine, six, and the same as three halves. Okay, so that's why we're never changing the bottom. The bottom is always 150. So the negative now, because these both have to be positive 150s, the negative now goes with the 125. Okay, so negative 125 plus 36 is negative 89 as our answer. Okay, I know what that was difficult. These are not, again, if you can get through 80% of the questions, that is good enough. We're going to go on to 1.4. So for 1.4, use operation and order symbols to write mathematical sentences, identify identities and inverses, use commutative, associative, and distributive properties. Those sound much more complicated than they are, okay? And the most important one, the one we're gonna see over and over is distributive, okay? We're gonna continue writing algebraic expressions and simplifying algebraic expressions, okay? Uh, equations are different than expressions because they have an equality sign, or sorry, an equal sign. I was just reading equality. <laughs> they have an equal sign, okay? Different terms for the equal sign include equals, gives, is, was, should be. So should be what was or is, yields, which is the same as gives, amounts to or adds to, represents, and is the same as. Good? Write each sentence as an equation, just like we did on last Friday. The difference of is subtraction, seven and a number, the number can be any letter, is equal to 42. So we're doing the same as we did Friday, but we're now adding an equal sign. So instead of an expression, it's an equation. The quotient of y and twice x, right? If you do something twice, it's two times. Two times is just two multiplied by, right? Is the same as the product of four and Z. So remember, uh, you go in order. Good. So I saw Y first. So I'm going to say Y is, and then I'm going to do the quotient or the division sign. And then I'm going to put in two X. So we have Y divided by two X is the same as four Z. You can, this is horizontal. You can also write it vertically. Y over 2X is 4Z because again, fractions are just division. Here are some equality and inequality symbols. Inequality just means these. They are not equal to, right? They are less than and greater than. So, 
this symbol means A is equal to B. It's just not equal to B. That's all we know. This is not equal to that. A is less than B. A is more than B or greater than B. A is less than or equal to because it has the less than symbol and half an equal sign. A is greater than or equal to B because it has the greater than sign and half the equal sign. Again, interrupt me if you have any questions at all. So what we know is that this one means less than. This one means greater than. And I kind of think of it as the way it's pointing on the number line. So if it's pointing, it's an arrow that is pointing that way towards the bigger numbers. Here it's pointing that way towards the smaller numbers. Good. So let's look at, think of a number line, right? We have zero. Insert less than or greater than symbols between the pair of numbers to make a true statement. So we have a negative six and six. Negative six is that direction on the number line. If I start at this number, I need to go that way to get to negative six. Negative six is less than six. Here I'm at negative 12, right? Negative 12 is less than that direction from negative eight. 8.2, oops, sorry, I'm supposed to go A, B, C. 8.25 and 8.250. These are the same number. If you put in 8.250, your calculator, we'll just call it 8.25. It is the same. You can add as many zeros behind it as you want. It's like putting a zero in front of a number without a decimal. So those two are equal, and I know that's not a choice, but it's true. Five and negative nine. If I'm at negative nine, I need to go that way on the number line to get to five, right? Negative nine is down here, five's over here, so I'm going to travel that way. Negative 2.7, negative 2.1. So let's just look at that. Here's negative two on the number line. If this is the next number on the number line, is that gonna be negative one or negative three? This one. Here's another number line. Here's two. If it's a regular number, or sorry, regular. <laughs> if it's on the positive side of zero, then- It would be negative one, right? This one? Close. Uh, the one on top. The one on top, ooh. Or, um, Yes, if this was, ne yes, you, okay. You're doing something different, but I see what you're doing. This one's negative one, right? That's what yeah. you're trying to say? Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Thank Sorry. You for no, I love that you answered. Nobody ever answers. It's beautiful. All right, so this one's negative one. If it was way over here, right? Way over there, that would be three. I'm just making it confusing, aren't I? All right, let's put this number line. Here's three. Here's that two. Here's negative one, like you said. Here's negative two. What is this number? Negative three. Yes. Sorry, guys. All right. So negative 2.7 is right here. Negative 2.1 is right here, right? So that is less than. It is a smaller number because remember, the bigger the negative is, the smaller it is as an actual number. Here we have zero and negative seven eighths. It doesn't even matter if you have any idea in your head what seven eighths is. This one's zero, this one's negative. So zero is always going to be greater than a negative number negative seven eighths. It'll give you a decimal if that makes it clearer too. You can always do that. If they're asking you for two different 
fractions. All right. So any, is that okay? On greater than and less than? All right. Each sentence into a mathematical statement. The difference of seven and X is less than or equal to 21. Good. And then this would be the difference of, is that minus sign? Good. Here, nine, remember, is not equal to. All that means is we put an equal sign and put a line through it. X plus Y. 30 is greater than. So greater than means this way on the number line. The sum of means we're adding nine and X, but then it says squared. What does squared mean? Square means you put a little two up here. It's like saying to the second power. Or to the power of two, you can say, okay? To the power of three, to the power of four, to the power of five, but Two, you can also call squared. Properties of real numbers. So the identity property is just saying that anything plus zero is itself. So that's the additive identity property. If you add it to zero, it's itself. The multiplicative identity property is if you multiply it by one, it is still itself. Okay. The opposite. Anything added, anything added to its inverse or its opposite, it's also called the inverse, will equal zero, right? Seven and negative seven are zero. Seven plus zero is seven. Seven times one is seven, okay? Reciprocal. This one um, we don't use a lot, but it is. We have used it. We'll use it at the very end. So a number times one over that number is the number one. So if you have, let's keep using seven. Seven times one over seven is one. Do you believe me? So a times one over a is one. And that's because any number divided by one is itself. Good. So if I want to turn seven into a fraction, I just put it over one. It doesn't change the value, but now it's a fraction. And remember, when we multiply fractions, we just go straight across. So seven times one is seven. One times seven is seven. A number divided by itself is always one. So that's why the reciprocal rule is true, because a is the same as a over one. And when you multiply those two, you get one or you get A over A. A over A will always be one, good. Double negative property, property we already saw in 1.3, negative, my, subtracting negative makes it a positive. So zero minus negative six is a positive six. Commutative property, again, it doesn't come up ever again. But commute, just think about you going from home to your job. Like, do we all go to school or do we go to our job? Anywhere, right? You are here. You have to go there. You moved, okay? And then later you go back. You commute. A plus B is the same as B plus A. B and A just commuted. <laughs> A times B is the same as B times A. They just commuted. Associative, your associates are like your friends or who you're close to, right? I have close associates. I have work associates. I have more distant associates. So here, A is associating with B first, but it is the same as B associating with C first and then A, okay? So you're just changing the order by adding parentheses.
Good. Distributive property is really the one that we are going to see a whole lot of this semester, okay? So that means if you have a number and you need to multiply it by two different things or three different things, you are going to take that number and distribute it, pass it out. Good, good. A times the quantity B plus C is the same as A times B plus A times C. So find the opposite. I know this was a lot of information, but the opposite just means the inverse, sorry, or you change the sign. The additive inverse of nine is negative nine. The additive inverse of negative one eighth is one eighth. We're just changing the sign. Uh, so I just called it regular inverse. Additive inverse just means that we're not doing multiplication, right? We're just changing it from a positive to a negative or a negative to a positive. The opposite or the inverse of each number. The inverse of zero, there is no inverse of zero. Good. The reciprocal is the multiplicative inverse. Good. So the opposite is you just add, you change the sign, right? But the reciprocal, because we're multiplying and we want it to equal one, right? Is you put it over one, okay? I would not worry about this name for it. We will only ever call it the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 11 is one over 11. The reciprocal of negative seven is, don't change the sign, negative one over seven. The reciprocal of eight thirds is mm, three eighths. Because eight thirds over one is eight divided by three divided by one. And that is eight divided by three divided by one. Reporting in progress. Sorry. Ah, sorry. <laughs> one divided by eight divided by three. Didn't even write that down right, right? So the reciprocal is one over that number, right? Eight thirds is one over eight thirds. One divided by eight divided by three is good. One divided by eight divided by three is 0.375 and three eighths is also 0.375. Good. So you don't need to remember that, but you're just flipping it, right? 11 over one becomes one over 11. Negative seven over one becomes negative one over seven. Eight thirds becomes three eighths. Use the commutative or associative property to complete. It will become clear which you're able to use, right? X plus eight, we have to commute. We have to move them. Eight plus X. Seven times X, which we can also write as seven X becomes X times seven. Three plus eight plus one, that would be, so these were the commutative commutative. Now you could do the commutative or you could do the associative for this one. So we could say three plus eight plus one. Negative five times four times two. So the four was with the negative five. Now it's with the two. 
x times y times 18. Now you could call it 18x times y if you wanted. Or you could say 18, oh, I guess you'd have to say 18y times x because that would be, I moved it and I gave it a different association. So here I did both <laughs> because I did not keep the 18 next to the Y. I moved it over to the X and I grouped it with the X. But these will not come back in this course, okay? Commutative and associative. It's just right now. Distributive, this is important. So I distribute or I spread out the seven to the X and to the four Y. Good. Seven times X is seven X. Seven times four. You just multiply the, the numbers, you get 28. And then you add that Y at the end. Good. Here, we're going to multiply three with a negative five. So that is negative because it's a Negative times a positive is always going to be a negative. Negative five times three. And that doesn't matter if you use parentheses or not. Good. So negative five times a positive three is a negative 15. Positive times a positive three times nine is 27, and again, just add the Z. Here, this is a very uh, difficult but important one, okay? If you have a minus sign in front of something, it's the same as multiplying that whole thing by a negative one, right? So that minus means I need to, so write this down. If there's a minus in front of it, change, all the signs. Okay. Or you can think of it as multiplying it by negative one. Multiply each part by negative one. Okay. So it's negative one times eight, negative one times x and negative one times negative W. I didn't put plus X because it's just a positive, but a minus W becomes a negative. Good. So negative one times eight is a negative eight. Negative one times X is a negative X and a negative one times a negative W is a positive W. So you can see that Multiplying by negative one is the same as changing all the signs. The positive x8 became a negative eight, the positive x became a negative x, and the negative w became a positive w. So we just put them back together. Negative eight minus x plus w. Plus w because there was no minus sign in front of it. We're combining all of them. So whenever you see a subtraction, even if it's a subtraction right here, it's a negative, right? But if it was a subtraction, change all the signs. Is that okay? It's pretty difficult. Example eight asks us to write each of these as an algebraic expression. A vending machine contains X number of quarters. Write an expression for the value of the quarters. So how much, the value is how much, right? How much is a quarter worth? 25 cents, right? That's how we write it, times the number of quarters. We don't know how many there are, so we just call it X. What is the total value in dollars, right? Because in dollars, the value of one quarter is 0.25 dollars. So we'll just multiply that by the number of quarters. Expression means there's no equal sign. The cost of Y tables, if each table costs 230. So each table is 230 and there are Y. Two, 
two numbers have a sum of 40. Okay. A and B have the sum of 40. If one of the numbers is A, represent the other number as an expression in A. Good. So basically, we're just going to solve for B, okay? So B is 40 minus A. That is an expression in A. So our first number is A, and our second number is 40 minus A. Two angles are supplementary if the sum of their measures is 180. So don't worry, we're not doing any geometry in this class. If the measure of one angle is x degrees, re represent the other angle as an expression in a. So this was an expression in a was 40 minus a. Here we have a plus b is 180 and represent it as an expression in, oops, sorry x. x plus b is 180. So an expression in x, we'll just subtract x from both sides. b is 180 minus x. Good. So the other angle is 180 minus x. The other number is 40 minus a. You are expressing it in terms of x. Here's just another small explanation of the distributive property. Inside the parentheses, you take each term, so the terms here are a and b, multiply it by the term on the outside, multiply it by c. So c times a is ca, c times b is cb, keep that sign the same. c times a plus b is ca plus cb. C times the quantity A minus B, same, but use the negative sign. C times A minus C times B. Good. Even if you have a 3B as your first term, 3B times A becomes 3BA. 3B times a positive 4, you take that 3 and the 4. 3 times 4 is 12. Bring the B. Good. Okay. Like terms contain the same variables raised to the same powers. Good. So here, 3x minus 5x plus 7, 3x minus 5x are the like terms. So you just say, what is 3 minus 5? It's negative 2. So 3x minus 5x becomes negative 2x, leave the 7. Okay, can we do this? Sorry guys, we have two minutes, all right. 8x plus 10x will be 18x, negative 8 minus 3, okay? Negative 11. Here, you want to combine the negative 7x and the 3x. Negative 7 plus 3 is negative 4x. 5 minus 2 is 3. Good. Here, 3y minus 2y plus y. So we have three minus two plus, what is that one? It's a one. So that's two y negative five minus seven, negative minus 12. Good. All right, I think we have to go. I'm so sorry. Um, come to class on Friday if 
you want to see those last two examples, okay? Um, but you certainly don't have to because those are only two examples. And I hope you have a great day. Thanks, guys. I'm going to stop recording.